So with the combined gas law, you can get any of the other gas laws simply by doing this. In Boyle's law, it's pressure versus volume at constant temperature. So if temperature is constant, then you don't need it because it would just simply cancel out and leave you with P1V1 equals P2V2. If you have Charles' law, it's a relationship between volume and temperature and pressure is held constant. Therefore, you can ignore it because it would just simply cancel out and you get Charles' law. In Gay-Lussac's law, it's a relationship between pressure and temperature. Volume remains constant, therefore you can cancel it out. So you can use the combined gas law to get any of the other three, and then you can solve problems, which is what we're going to do next. Whenever you're faced with a gas law problem, the first thing you should do is write down the equation. P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2 and then create a little data table over on the side. This does take a moment extra to do, but it gives you a better shot of getting a right answer when you're done. Let's go through the problem. It says we've got a five liter sample. Well, that's our initial volume because liters is a unit of volume. At STP, now if you don't remember what the conditions of temperature and pressure are at STP, then all you need to do is look them up. On reference table A, which gives the standard temperature and pressure. Well, let's come back to that. The pressure decreased to 0 0.50 atmospheres. And temperature is constant, so we can eliminate temperature. Now, because P2 is in atmospheres, we're going to want standard pressure in atmospheres. Let's see, we have one atmosphere or 101.3 kilopascals. Let's use one atmosphere. I know it says just one atmosphere on here. They're really not giving you enough significant figures. That's 1.0000000 to infinite sig figs on the atmospheres. Now that you have your numbers, let's solve the problem. Temperature is constant, so we don't need that. Let's get rid of temperature. We're trying to solve for V2. So circle V2 and get V2 by itself by dividing both sides by P2. This gets P2 out of there. Not only that, the units for pressure will cancel on this side, leaving us with only the units of volume. So we know this is going to work. So we plug it in. Our initial pressure is 1.00 atmospheres. Our volume one is 5.0 liters. Over, our second pressure is 0 0.50 atm. So what happens is, atmospheres cancels and leaves us with liters. So we have 1 times 5, which is 5, divided by 0.5. This equals 10 decimal point liters. 3 sig figs, 2 sig figs, 2 sig figs, 2 sig figs, and our final answer. And that makes sense, because if our pressure gets cut in half, then our volume should double, because it's an indirect relationship. Same thing goes for the next problem. The first thing you need to do is write down the equation. P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. Then make a data table. Don't ever say, I don't know where to start, because you start every single problem the same way. There is no difference when doing these problems. Every one is done exactly the same way. The pressure of a 5.0 milliliter, milliliter is volume, 5.0 milliliters in the syringe is 100 kilopascals. Kilopascals is pressure one. If the volume is increased to 15.0 milliliters, what will the new pressure be? And temperature remains constant, so therefore we don't need it. We're trying to solve for pressure two, so we divide both sides by volume two to get it out of there. This way, the units of volume will cancel and leave us with our units for pressure. Plugging in the numbers, P1, V1, over V2. At this point, you could plug it into a calculator and solve, or you could say 5 and 15 simplifies to 1 over 3. 100 times 1 divided by 3 equals 33. 2 sig figs, 33 kPa. And I know it's kPa because I canceled out the milliliters, so they're gone. And this makes sense because if you triple the volume, you'll only have one-third your pressure. Indirect relationship. 
Here's another gas law problem. Again, same thing. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, R2, D2. Data table, P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, T2. Ching, 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 ching. Good. A 5.0 liter sample of gas. 5.0 liters is our initial volume. At 300 Kelvin, 300 decimal point Kelvin. Notice I copy the decimal point down. Keep my sig figs all right. Is heated to 600 Kelvin. That's our second temperature. Okay, therefore pressure remains constant. What's our new volume? Now if you're trying to do this, the first thing we need to do is get rid of pressure because it's constant and we don't need it. We're trying to solve for V2. V2 is divided by T2. What's the antidote for division? Multiplication. Gone. Now the units for temperature will cancel and leave us with our units for volume. So let's plug in the numbers. T2 is 600 Kelvin times V1 is 5.0 liters over our first temperature, which was 300 Kelvin. You could pop this in your calculator, or you could realize that 600 and 300 simplifies to 2 over 1, and that 2 times 5 is simply 10, and that would be in, because Kelvin's cancel, liters. 10 decimal point for the two sig figs. This makes sense. If we double the temperature, we'll double the volume because it's a direct relationship. Here's another gas law problem. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. P1 V1 T1, P2 V2 T2. Okay, a sample of gas at 200 Kelvin, first temperature, has a volume of 10.0 liters. To what temperature? Must the gas be changed for the volume to triple? Okay, the volume to triple. Well, the volume is 10, so if it's going to triple, it would be 30 after it's tripled. Right? Because triple 10 and you get 30. Pressure is held constant, therefore we don't need it in the equation. We're trying to solve for T2. Now, T2 is in the denominator. There are a couple of ways that you can take care of this. First of all, you can't just get V2 out of there because that would still leave T2 in the denominator. So an easy way to do it is to cross multiply. T2 V1 equals T1 V2. See what I did there? Cross multiply to cross the equal sign. Now T2 is out of the denominator. Yay! So we can divide both sides by V1. Now the volume units will cancel and leave us with temperature. Our first temperature is 200 Kelvin. Our second volume is 30.0. Whoops, my bad, I had a naked number. That should be liters. Over volume 1, which is 10.0 liters. 30 and 10 simplifies to 3 over 1. Liters cancel. 200 times 3 is 600, three sig figs, yep, 600, and because the liters cancel, it leaves us with Kelvin. And that makes sense, because if we triple the volume, the temperature will triple as well, direct relationship. Triple 200, you get 600. So that's a way of checking to make sure you've done it correctly.